I was blessed this week to have quite a few conversations with women. And there's one thing that kept coming up for all of them who don't know each other. But as I listened to them, there was a lot of this doubt, self-doubt, because they've been so successful in business and other areas of their life, but losing weight has not been successful. And so they're feeling lazy. They're feeling unmotivated. They're feeling like this is just not for them. They're questioning if they can even do this, they can hit this goal. They feel defeated. They've lost hope and they're confused on which way to go. And today's episode was inspired because of these conversations, because it's time that you get on board with what God says and not what the world says anymore to get you out of this place of stuckness, confusion into a place when you are losing weight and really starting to thrive in your health. You see, the world is going to say, believe in yourself. You've got this. You're strong. you got to have this positive self-talk. But we're women of God, so we're going to be doing this differently. That's not what scripture says. Scripture says we must believe in our God because he's at work within us. He's at work within you. So basically, you're hopeless on your own unless God helps you. That's the bottom line. And when we look at scripture, this is what we see over and over. And so as women of God, we need to go about this journey the way God's principles provide us in the word. So today I want to speak truth into you. I want to give you some insights on to get back on track so that you can get out of this place of funk and start to thrive in this area. And if you're one of those women who keeps saying, I know I need to set up a weight loss audit with Andrea and I haven't done it yet. Can you get that done? Maybe this is really important for you to do to set your feet on a path that's going to really thrive for you. And so that's really easy. All you need to do is go to the show notes, click the link in the show notes and email me. Let's connect. Let's have a conversation. Let's see if the 12 week Trinity transformation weight loss program is a good fit for you. It has helped so many women reach their goal, completely transform them from the inside out because God is at the center of it all. So if you haven't done it yet and you want to do that now, you can either go to the show notes, like I said, or go to andrealynn.com and send me a message from there and say, let's talk and let's do this. I'm excited to connect with you. Hey, woman of God, are you sick of fad diets that only get you temporary results? Are you looking for a simple, foundational, faith-based weight loss framework that will fit into your busy day so it becomes a lifestyle? Are you ready to break free from binge eating, overeating, sugar addiction, self-sabotage, and the battle with your scale? It is time to let the chain breaker Jesus move mightily into your weight loss journey. I'm Andrea Lynn. I am so excited that you're here with me on Christian Women's Weight Loss. I remember what it felt like to be 75 pounds overweight, exhausted, overwhelmed, riddled with poor self-esteem, low self-image, and unworthiness until I was radically saved by Jesus and he made everything new. With 20 years of experience and numerous certifications in fitness and nutrition, I'm here to teach you everything I know about food and fitness while making faith your primary drive as a busy Christian woman wanting to lose weight and keep it off. If you're ready to let the Holy Spirit transform you from the inside out while getting your body, which is God's vessel, healthy so you can rise up and live out the calling that God has on your life, you're in the right place. May the Lord give you ears to hear, eyes to see, a heart that's pleasing to him, along with a body that will be transformed for his glory. Let's dive in. All right, let's dive in here. I'm just going to ask you to open your heart to this message because it's time that you let God pour into you. You are a high achieving woman of God that you give and give and that's amazing. But you also need to get poured back into so open your heart 
and let this message pour into you. Are you aware that God will do the unexpected for you? I want you to think about how many times God has done the unexpected for you in different areas of your life. So why wouldn't God do the unexpected for you in your health and in your weight loss journey? Our God is in the business of doing the unexpected. We see this in scripture and he's a God that will meet you where you are. The question is, is have you asked him? So if you feel like the burdens of life seem way too heavy to bear, and so you got all these burdens and it's hard then to walk a path of trying to lose weight because this even feels like a burden, so stressed out. It's natural to feel overwhelmed. It's natural sometimes to have a path that seems daunting. Uncertainty arises, especially when it's just not your forte. In these moments, we must not forget the profound proof that defines our faith. So can we look at Isaiah 43, 19 for a second? It says this, for I am about to do something new. See, I've already begun. Do you not see it? I will make a pathway through the wilderness. I will create rivers in the dry wasteland. Isaiah is delivering a message of new life, of new hope for Israel. This promise here of God would be fulfilled in the coming of Jesus and the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. But this is a promise for us too. Even now, we can experience new life in him by following his new path and drinking his refreshing water, living water every single day by the word of God. I don't know about you, but when I received Jesus and I had this encounter with Jesus, he really made everything new. When he says he gives us eyes to see and ears to hear, I literally saw my physical eyes had different color perception. Everything outside was brighter for me. So you and I need to stand on this word that's saying he's about to do something new. It's already begun. Don't you see it? Okay, he's going to make the path through the wilderness and create rivers in the dry wasteland. So no matter what, he's going to make a way. No matter what, he's going to help you figure it out. Listen, you also know that our God is not limited by the constraints of humanity. Our God is the God of the impossible. I mean, parting Red Seas, that's in human minds, impossible. But this is our God. In the kingdom of God, there's no such thing as luck, okay? That's witchcraft. There's no such thing as accident. God's hand is always on us. God's hand is always in it, in whatever we're in. He is and has preset every moment of every situation. It's when we least expect it that he acts and he moves in. And these are the ways that we could have never dreamed of. Again, going back to when, you know, he saved me, my salvation, I could have never expected how that was going to unfold. And maybe your story of how the Lord saved you is the same. It was like turning the impossible to the possible. And I just want to remind you that that is not, doesn't just stop once you receive your salvation, that this is our God that continues to provide ways to turn what feels impossible or looks impossible to possible. He proves his power is far greater than what our brain can comprehend. We need to get this. Can I just say that there's so many of you, and you, you might be listening to this podcast because you found me through TikTok, but so many women, you know, they'll be like, I never go on TikTok. And I go on TikTok and there you were. And I had just prayed the night before, the day before, God, help me lose weight, help me get my health in order. And then guess what? My TikTok shows up. This is the way that God works. He just, you pray and then he brings using worldly things sometimes for you to, to grasp your attention to say, hey, 
Let's go this way. I'm listening to you. I hear you. And if you're needing to lose 20 pounds, maybe you're needing to lose 40 or 50, 100. And you're like, I've tried it all. The world's offered me all these ways to combat this. I get my health in order for a little bit. I lose the weight, but then I gain it back plus more. Can I just ask you this? Did you really surrender it all to God then? Have you really surrendered your journey to losing weight and getting your health in order to God yet? That you don't have to answer me, but take it to God and say, Lord, have I surrendered all of this to you yet? And if not, what am I, <laughs> what am I th- controlling or thinking I can control and haven't surrendered yet? And let him show you. He can bring life into this weight loss journey that feels like you're wandering in the wilderness and dying, okay? Dieting sometimes feels like dying. It doesn't have to be. I teach that actually in the 12-week program, but that's how it feels. Have you ever done a fast, not to lose weight, but a fast for spiritual reasons and you feel like you're dying? Yeah, because your flesh is dying and the spirit, the Holy Spirit is pouring into your spirit, man, and your spirit through the Holy Spirit is coming alive. It doesn't feel good at all. Feels like you're in the desert. But when all hope is lost, but God. Let's look at Psalm 37 verses four and five. It says this, take delight in the Lord and he will give you your heart's desires. Commit everything you do, everything you do, okay? Even weight loss. Commit everything you do to the Lord. Trust him and he will help you. So maybe you're thinking, all right, how do, how do I take delight? How do I do this? Well, to delight in someone means to experience great pleasure and joy in their presence. So we're called to seek God first, seek his face with all our heart, and then delight right? Experience great pleasure and joy being in his presence. And this happens when we really know him well, when we have this faith in him, like never before. And that pleases God to have faith, great faith. So what if your weight loss journey is going to drive you even closer to God? Amen. Have you thought about that? I mean, you could, maybe you're a woman of God and you've been a woman of God for 40, 50 years. Maybe you're new. Maybe you've only been, you know, had your salvation for two, three, five years. It doesn't matter where you are in that walk because we are always called to grow in his image and likeness and seek his face more and more and more. We can't get enough of him. I mean, it says right here in his word. He will give you your heart's desires. You desire to lose weight. Your body's not even yours anyway. It's his. It's a temple of God. And he knows that when your body, which is his temple, releases the weight, it will be in better working order. Don't you think he wants that for you? Yes. So I'm going to, that's speaking to every woman that says, well, this is vanity. No, it's not. It is the temple of God and we are called to steward it well. So if there's any obstacles that are there, guess what? They're not too great for him. No weight, no obstacle is too great for him. He is our overcomer. He's a God of overcoming. So my question to you is, have you placed your trust in him fully yet? And I mean the trust in him on this path, because with him, all things are possible. We serve a God of miracles. How are you feeling? Come on. Are you feeling like, yes, okay, I'm I'm getting this life, the word of God coming back in. I'm starting to feel a shift happen. If so, awesome. It's going to get higher. You're going to get more poured into you. If not, stay with me because more is coming. Okay. You are a woman of God. You have received salvation. You have to walk in certainty with that because you, uh, you have to understand that he began a good work in you and he is faithful to complete it. Why? You're his masterpiece. 
God has the ability to transform any situation, any situation. So my next question to you is this, are you walking this road out with expectancy? Or are you walking this road with your head down and like, oh, I tried all the things, nothing ever works? Very different place. Are you walking the road with expectancy? Standing in victory, walking in in expectancy? Well, let me take you to Proverbs 3, verses 5 and 6. It says this, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. Seek his will in all you do, and he will show you which path to take. God will show you the path to take. God is the ultimate path. God's the better judge of what we need because he sees the whole picture. So we have to trust him completely in every choice we make. We can't trust our own ideas, our own, you know, um, thoughts of this feels right, this don't feel right. You can't trust your heart. It says it in the word. You have to trust God. So you have to bring your decisions to God in prayer and let the Bible be your guide. Follow God's leading. He's going to direct your path in the right direction. You, He's not going to let you down. Um, This is another thing that I've seen. It's just so beautiful. Again, how God directs our paths. You know, women saying, I was just praying, Lord, help me. And they find me on Facebook. We have a conversation. And they're like, I don't know what I'm getting myself into. But this is what feels right. This is what God spoke to me, something's coming, he's doing something. And when they pray, they say, God says yes. And again, they're like, I don't know what I'm getting myself into. But God says yes. And guess what happens? They are completely transformed. Inflammation goes down. Blood pressure changes. Cholesterol changes. Blood sugar numbers come down astronomically. They lose the weight. They have more energy. They sleep better because God knew what was best for them, what they really needed. You know, there's going to be challenges in weight loss. You already know this. This It's probably why you're listening to this. There's challenges. But what if you looked at the challenges as... This is a way that our faith is being tested. So we can't lose heart. We can't give up. We just have to pray and ask God, God, this is a big challenge for me. I know you're in it. I know you're working, but I'm feeling weak. So God, I'm praying. I'm asking for great faith. Increase my faith, Lord. God is always orchestrating a divine plan that's greater than you can even imagine, that's greater than you're comprehending. I believe that you have seen that in your life in different areas. And I also believe that you will see it in your life in this area. God, our God is a master strategist. Our God is also a beacon of hope, which leads me into John 14, verses 13 and 14. This is right out of Jesus's mouth, all red letters. It says, you can ask for anything in my name and I will do it so that the son can bring glory to the father. Yes, ask me for anything in my name and I will do it. He has plans for you, good plans to give you hope in a future. And you know what? He makes a way where there seems to be no way. So my question to you right now is, have you asked him yet? Have you asked him to help you? Have you asked him? to help you on the path to losing weight. Now, listen, the thing is, is that you can't just say, okay, Jesus, I need to to lose 20 pounds and keep going about the same things you're going about. You also have to make some different decisions and some different actions. But asking him is first to help you because it is through the power of the Holy Spirit that you start to transform. It is through the power of the Holy Spirit that you gain the fruit of self-control. It is through the power of the Holy Spirit that you are motivated, that you have the wisdom and creativity to walk out this path differently. And with that being said, I want to take you to Exodus 14 verses 13 and 14. It says, but Moses told the people, don't be afraid. Just stand still and watch the Lord rescue you today. 
the Egyptians you see today will never be seen again. The Lord himself will fight for you. Just stay calm. What does this mean for you? After you've asked, you got to stand firm in your faith. You got to trust him. He says, do not be afraid. So stand firm in faith, in victory, in expectancy. And he will turn this trial into a testimony. He's going to use the transformation of your body for his glory. He's going to take your obstacles and turn them into pathways for his glory. My question to you is, are you limiting God in this area of your life? It's really important that you surrender your life to him, but also surrender this area to him. You see, God showed me shortly after I was saved uh, this in a dream, this beautiful home. And I was in the center of it, which was big and bright and beautiful and clean. And then he brought me down a pathway in the same home and showed me a door and said, open this door. And I opened the door and in that room, which was in this home, which the home looked gorgeous, beautiful. The room was nasty. It was dark. It was dank. It was stinky. It was, it just, it didn't fit. It was like, this can't be the same home. And what he said to me was, this is part of your sanctification process. You didn't let me in this room yet. That has to do with your past. And I was like, wow, okay. I didn't even realize I, you know, had to do that. But, you know, we also have to remember that our God, the God we serve is a a wonderful, compassionate, compassionate, loving gentleman. So we do need to say, okay, Lord, where have I not let you in? I'm opening the door. Come on in. And so I think a lot of women haven't let him in into this area. So faith is going to, going to be the big piece here. Faith that believes in the impossible. It's through faith that mountains are moved. It's through faith that, faith that seas are parted. So do you have that faith? Remember, he only asks us even to have faith as small as a mustard seed. And that will move mountains, part seas. So let me just recap really quick some of the points that I hit that are important for you to take with you today. Maybe you're taking notes and really sit with God on and, you know, ask these questions to God. God, did I really surrender all to you yet? God, have I placed my trust fully in you yet? God, am I walking out this road with expectancy yet? God, am I limiting you? Have I put you in a box in this area? And God, I need great faith. So asking him to increase your faith, give you great faith in this area, in all areas, but in this area, once you have that great faith, I do believe that it pours out into all areas of our life. So what does this really mean? If I had to sum this up too, number one, it's so important that you have a relationship with him. That's number one, because in that relationship, you know him, you trust his character, you know his character, you trust his character, you know that he stands on his promises and he does what he says because he's he's a faithful God, which then means that you can walk in the victory because Jesus has already done it. And you can also walk in faith in embracing that there is a supernatural power to God. And that supernatural power to God will also show up in your life, specifically in your weight loss. So when you have this relationship, and when you have great faith, and you take an action, mighty, mighty supernatural things happen. Can I just give you some examples? Noah, He had faith. People thought he was crazy building an ark. He had faith. What did he do? His action was built the ark. Abraham, he had faith. What action did he do? Leave his home, obeyed God, not really knowing where he was going, but took the action anyway. Another one where great faith and an action had to be taken was Moses when he held up the staff in his hands, right? 
and that when he held up the staff, it gave the Israelites the advantage to, to winning. But his arms were getting tired. And so with help, with help, he had help from Aaron and her. He held up his arms until sunset. What was the result? The Israelites won the battle. Moses struck the rock for water. Water came gushing out. Faith paired with the action and supernatural things happen. So moving forward for you, great faith. If you don't have it yet, that's okay. Keep praying. God will give it to you. Great faith, remembering who our God is and taking action towards your goal. Changing the way you're eating, um, going to bed earlier, moving your body more, spending more time in the word of God, not turning to sugar for comfort, but turning to God instead. All of these things are actions. You can move the needle in the direction you want it to go. Now, are you motivated? Yes. I pray that this has motivated you, but not just the self, the worldly ways of motivation, but the godly way of motivation, remembering who your God is. He is a God of miracles, a supernatural God with power and strength and might and knows it all. And guess what? You have that God living inside of you. And so through him, you can do all things, including lose that 20 pounds, 40 pounds, 50 pounds, and have really good health. He told me two years ago when I was, he was basically sitting with me in this room that I'm recording this podcast in and said, get out a piece of paper and showed me the 12 week Trinity transformation program. And he said, this is important because it is time for the women in the kingdom of God to rise up and do what I'm calling them to do. They need to be healthy. And so it's really important to get your health in order. And many times that means losing weight because that extra weight is hard on the body because God is calling us to do something else, something greater, something bigger. So receive that woman of God, receive that for yourself now. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for your word today. Thank you so much for the inspiration and the power that has moved here today, Lord. I am just so grateful that you take the reins every time and that you deliver what every woman listening to this needs to hear, Lord. I pray that you continue to change her heart, make her heart pleasing to you. And as her heart changes, Lord, her body transforms also. Lord, as you change her from the inside, that her physical body also changes, Lord. As you set her free, from all the old yesteryear pains and emotions, Lord, that you set her free there and that sets her physical body free from pain, from discomfort, from extra weight, Lord, that she sees through your power and through your might that you are working so mightily in her life, Lord. Show her the way. Give her the path that you want her to take. Make it plain, Lord, that she knows it is you and this is exactly the next step that you want her to take. Lord, thank you so much for loving us, loving us where we are. Thank you, Lord, for giving us the Holy Spirit that is our guide and our compass, that is our communicator, that is our our convictor, this beautiful conviction to bring us into the ways that you want us to be, to live, to act. Lord, thank you so much for the fruits of the Spirit. Lord, I just pray that the fruits of the Spirit grow in each of us, self-control, gentleness, faithfulness, goodness, kindness, patience, peace, joy, and love. Lord, increase those fruits of the Spirit. Prune away all of the branches that no longer need to be there so that we can receive the transformation that is in your plans. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Before you go, if you have been transformed or blessed by this, please subscribe. Then go to Apple Podcasts and leave me a written review. 
It is the number one way that you can bless me and get the word out there to other women who are also seeking. Screenshot your favorite episode, share on your social media feeds, be sure to tag me, and I'd love to connect more often, so join my Facebook group. Until next time, remember God says in 1 Corinthians 10.31, so whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. God bless you, my sister in Christ.